Hello, everybody. Um, thanks for giving me this opportunity because I do absolutely hate public speaking, so it's a very good practice for me. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to talk to you about the Intimacy Lab, which was um, something that we did at, at the Barbican last week. Um, I just want to check first, is, is everyone over the age of 18? <laughs> I actually wouldn't normally ask that, but the Barbican made me ask that, so I thought I'd do it here as well. Um, so, what do we mean by intimacy? Um, it's such a hard word to define, and I think it means such different things to different people. So, actually, we're really at the beginning of trying to explore what intimacy is. But for Hack the Barbican and the first intimacy lab, we did focus m much more on sexual intimacy. And I guess we did this because there's certain things that I want to be involved in changing, which is how we find it really hard to talk about sexual intimacy. We find it really hard to talk about sex in an open and healthy way. And the conversation tends to be either about the sort of medical and the biological, or it's the sort of really titillating hedonistic stuff. And actually, when I did my MSc in psychology, I looked at sex in relation to well-being, and that's the stuff I'm really interested in. So I'm just going to talk you uh, really quickly through what actually happened at the Intimacy Lab. Um, the first thing that we had was something called Pillow Talk. Um, didn't actually work very well, but we learned a lot from it. Um, so the idea with, with this is we had three different microphones set up for people to go and sort of whisper into, and we had questions up asking people, what makes you feel known? What would, could you share with us that makes you feel vulnerable? And then we had some headphones further along where they could listen to what everybody had been saying during the course of the evening. We had a series of talks ranging from somebody who does magic with materials, kind of making the unseen scene, through to a sex therapist. So I wanted to try and avoid too much academic talk and I wanted to try and avoid too much of the kind of practitioner sexual health focus. So I tried to curate it <coughs> sort of somewhere in between. Um, then we had something called Scales of Intimacy. Which was really, which was actually a something on a screen where we excuse the really explicit imagery there, um, <coughs> where we were really interested in people. People could move these around, and we built a canvas up over the course of the two evenings, and we were really interested in people putting them together in ways that represented intimacy for them. And some people put them in, you know, sexual poses, and other people actually put them almost quite far away from one another. But there was something intimate about how they were relating. Um, the one that's probably most relevant to this talk, because it's the sort of digital aspect, is we, um, it's called a really annoying name, called crafting your sexual expression. But actually what it is, is just 3D printing sex toys. So, <laughs> um, and, that, and that was the thing that we really wanted to sort of explore there, because that's something we're looking to develop further. Um, and we weren't really sure whether people would really want to sit down and design their own sex toy. So we tried to create it as an experience. We gave people a design brief asking them really different questions to help them get in the headspace because it's very hard to just sit down and design something. And people were doing it with their partners as well, so it was a great way for people to have a conversation with somebody else and communicate about their desires. Um, and it really worked. We had Everyone that sat down to do it did it, which was a great discovery for us. Um, and then the last thing was table for two, where people could sit down and choose to have dinner with a stranger or with somebody that they know as a way of exploring intimacy when you're eating. Oh, no, that wasn't the last one. This is the last <laughs> one, <laughs> which um, is called the Internet Mirror. And there's a couple of people in the audience here that I know did this. And it's two authors, Zoe and Sarah, who sit there with their typewriters and it's kind of like a confessional or just a you share with them, they ask you questions and they type up for you something that you get to take away in a sealed envelope. It's not digital, no one else will ever see it. It's something for you to take away about what you have shared with them around your desires, your experiences, your fantasies. Um, that was that. So, yeah, what next? We're, I'm, I'm starting to sort of go out and talk about it. Um, we're hopefully going to partner up with the Wellcome Trust. Um, 
So they've got a big study called the Natsal study, which is the largest scientific study of sex since the Kinsey report. And the lead researcher from that we're sort of meeting with around is this is, is the 3D printing stuff particularly a way of doing sex research and doing qualitative research alongside their quant research. Um, we're going to do more events, hopefully set up the sex toy business. Um, <laughs> and that's the last slide. So yeah, come and find me if you've got any thoughts. Um, I'd love to hear them. And that's my detail. <laughs>